Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. Welcome to part three of this ongoing series about how to create a continued conversation system using OpenAI and AppSheet. In this video, we're going to focus on how to craft the perfect response from OpenAI using some basic prompt engineering techniques. Let's get to it. Hey, look at that. So, all right, yeah, there's, there's some, it, it returned a whole bunch of weirdness. Well, that's a wild response. I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, so the thing that I'm gonna do in order to prevent this sort of weirdness from happening is I'm gonna do some prompt engineering type stuff. Um, so clearly that's not the answer that I'm looking for, right? That is not what I want it to do at all. So how can I get it to do what I want? All right, this thing understands language. So you can literally just tell this thing what it is that you're looking to do, right? So I didn't provide any kind of instructions in that thread history. All that thread history is, is literally just like a, a list of everything that's gone down. In fact, if we go and we look at it, we can see what it looks like right here, right? So I've got like this Q1 and then here's my question and then the A1 and then this is everything that it did. All right. so. How can I get this to where it doesn't do whatever all this crap is? All right, so I'm gonna go back to my automation. I'm gonna go to this task where I'm sending it to OpenAI. And I'm gonna come down here to the prompt, right? Okay, and it's inside of here. This is where I wanna add some instructions, right? So right now, I'm literally just sending it the thread history and then like this, hey, start, start your answer thing. So before the thread history is where I'm going to put my instructions, right? So I'm going to do something like start a text thing and I'm going to say, um, you are chatting or how about respond like a helpful chat bot. Here is the interaction history the line break i'm going to do a little that thing and then i'll do that and then we'll put history right there right all right so now instead of me just feeding this thing just the history right with no kind of anything now i'm giving it some instructions now i'm giving it a little guidance on what i want it to do respond like a helpful chatbot here's the interaction history and then that interaction history is going to get you something like what we saw in here, right? So it's going to be like Q1, blah, 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 A1, blah, 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 right? Okay. So like, but this is all going to be empty in the, in the original prompt. So let's try this again. I'm going to come here. I'm going to copy my statement, delete this record. This is easy. And let's start a new thread again i'll push that now i don't know if you noticed but um it returned the total tokens too inside the field there was like 300 or something that it used yeah, yeah all right it returned a service oriented architecture is a style of what service oriented architecture what what okay you'd see Look at this. So look at the response that we got back. So it's got this three hashtags space and then a line break and a line break. Okay. So it's putting in this separator between what we have and what it's doing. Right. But it missed the fact that I already put it in probably because I don't have two spaces above this. I only have one line break. I probably need two. Okay. So, Let's go back and reconfigure things, right? So we come back to here. Okay. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I see why. I'm missing a comma, right? I'm in the middle of a concatenate and I've got like all of this text with a comma and I don't have a comma here. Yep. That's what it is. So if I do that, that should get that in there. Okay. All right. 
if we save this, let's try all of that again. All right. Let's try and expand the question maybe a bit more. No, 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 no. I want to leave it. Just let it. What is the what is app sheet good for? I'm just going to keep using the same question to see what we get from this. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. All right. Oh, here we go. We got an actual legit answer this time. App sheet can be used to create quick, powerful, and easy to use mobile apps to deliver to help you manage and analyze data, deliver actionable insights and automate workflows. AppSheet helps you and your team collect, share and communicate data better. Ah, all right. Now, the real test, right? The real test is, can we, can we continue this conversation now? All right, so let's add in another message. This message is, how can I use it so I'm not going to identify what we're talking about. Um, if I'm running a construction company. All right. So in order for it to answer that question, it's going to have to know that we were originally talking about AppSheet. Because I said, how can I use it? It what? What do you talk? What do you mean it? Okay. So if we do here, ha ha, AppSheet. <laughs> How did you love when things work? AppSheet can be used to help you with tasks such as managing and tracking employee time, creating customer invoices, tracking job progress and costs, ordering supplies and materials, monitoring invoices, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh man, don't you love it when things work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the end of part three. By now, you have perfect responses coming back from OpenAI and your conversations are starting to take shape. In the next and final video in this initial installment of this evolution series, I'll show you how you can use the AppSheet API to update the thread label after asking OpenAI to generate one for us. You can view that video here.